Bible says in Psalms 100 verse 4 to give thanks to the Lord and praise his holy name. Lord, I want to thank you from the bottom. to get yourself together before there's no more Christmas. announced today the end of all religious writings, teachings, celebrations, and songs. Offenders will now be referred to our 
re-education centers. If you see something, say something. Revelation chapter 4 verses 8 through 11. Day and night they never stop saying, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty, who was and is and is to come. Whenever the living creatures give glory, honor, and thanks to him who sits on the throne and who lives forever and ever, the 24 elders fall down before him who sits on the throne and worship him who lives forever and ever. They lay their crowns before the throne and say, You are worthy, our Lord and God, to receive glory and honor and power. For you created all things, and by your will they were created and have their being. Holy, holy, holy. Merciful in my 
Galatians chapter 5, verses 1 through 6, the message. Christ has set us free to live a free life. So take your stand. Never again let anyone put a harness of slavery on you. I am emphatic about this. The moment any one of you submits to circumcision or any other rule-keeping system, at that same moment, Christ's hard-won gift of freedom is squandered. I repeat my warning. The person who accepts the waves of circumcision trades all the advantages of the free life in Christ for the obligations of the slave life of the law. I suspect you would never intend this, but this is what happens. When you attempt to live by your own religious plans and projects, you are cut off from Christ. You fall out of grace. Meanwhile, we expectantly wait for a satisfying relationship with the Spirit. For in Christ, neither our most conscientious religion nor disregard of religion amounts to anything. What matters is something far more interior, faith expressed in love.
Let us pray. Most gracious and eternal God, our Father, we thank you that you have all power. You have glory. You have dominion and majesty throughout all generations. We're so thankful for this day that you gave us the opportunity to praise and bless your holy and righteous name. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for the words of this 145th Psalms that tell us throughout of the scripture that you will be the one to give us the glory, the majesty, dominion, and power. We thank you that each generation is going to praise your name for the great and wonderful things that you have done in our lives. So we thank you and we love you that all glory belongs to you. Dominion comes from you. Power belongs to you throughout all generations. So bless us and we shall be blessed. Keep us and we shall be kept in the palm of your hand. Guide us and lead us with your instruction and direction. And we be ever so grateful, but ever so careful to give your name all the honor, the glory, but most of all, the praise. This is your humble service prayer that I ask in Jesus' name. And all those who love the Lord says amen, amen, and amen.
the haunting. Thoughts of dying haunt me, or should I say fear? Am I afraid to die, or am I afraid that I have not done all that I should have done? Do I fear to meet my maker? To have him disappointed with his work? Whose life has I touched in a positive way? What kind of testimony have I lived for my God, for my Savior that I profess to love? Have I been disobedient? In the end, will my God turn for me in disgust at the mess I have made of my life? We all crave acceptance and love from our parents. Do we expect any less from our Heavenly Father? But what have we done to show him we love him? What have I done? Have I become what I despise, a hypocrite, a backslider? Someone striving to remove the mold from my brother's eye while I have a beam in my own. I once was blind, but now I see. There is always room for growth. Today, I started growing again. I was not afraid to die. I was afraid of what my God would say when I went before his throne. favorite songs in the world is God Gave Me a Song by Myrna Summers. So I'm sure most of you all are familiar with it. I won't sing it. <laughs> so it says, God gave me a song that the angels cannot sing. I've been washed in the blood of the crucified one. I've been redeemed. And I love that song. And the more I sang it and the more I thought about it, I saw the some of the deeper implications of it and it's that I have a choice given to me by God I needed to be washed in the blood I needed to be saved because God gave me a choice in my own determination and that was kind of mind-blowing you know for a minute there it was actually a little scary when you think about God we 
tend to make God very, very small and, and kind of condense him down to our own understanding. But when you think about the creator of everything, of not just Earth, not just our solar system, but all these galaxies, the entire universe, black holes, just everything, just the intricacy of our bodies, of all creation, of just life. God created all of that. God created me and gave me a choice. That's amazing. It's absolutely amazing. And it, you know, made me think back on a very familiar scripture, Joshua chapter 24, verse 15. But if serving the Lord seems undesirable to you, then choose for yourselves this day whom you will serve, whether the gods of your ancestors served beyond the Euphrates or the God of the Amorites in whose land you are living. But as for me and my household, we will serve the Lord. That is a really powerful, powerful thought. Um, and, and the more I thought on it, it made me think about some really important things associated uh, with choice. So the first thing is, if you have a choice in your life, in situations, don't waste it. Do not waste it. There are too many of us, especially too many Christians, who just float along and don't take an active role in their own Christian life, in their Christian walk, in their church, in their communities, just in life in general. We're just floating along, going along, getting along, you know, not trying to do anything active. We're not using this great gift of choice that God has given us. So I will always use myself as an example in my job. I have a wonderful job uh, for the federal government that I got through a blessing from my church family, a good church member, uh, recommended me for this position, God bless her. And from there, I just moved along in my career. But I was not deliberate in my career moves. So now, as I am a few years away from retirement, I'm in a position that I'm really not loving, <laughs> have been in this position and similar positions for a couple of years now, because I was not deliberate in my career choices. I saw things changing around me and I was not active in making sure that I was positioned appropriately to take advantage of the situations or avoid bad situations. So it's not a horrible place to be, you know, I'm not gonna get fired tomorrow or anything like that, but I'm not loving my job the way I did before. And that's my fault because I was not making active choices in my own life. And I, I think sometimes, you know, if we're honest with ourselves, we are not actively making choices about our Christian life. We're going to church, we're sitting in the pews when the churches are open, you know, we're just kind of floating along and we're not stopping to really consider where we are in our Christian walk on a daily basis. That's something we have to do. We have to be active. This this choice that God gives you implies that relationship. We've got to work on that relationship on a daily basis, every minute, every single day. We've got to rededicate ourselves to Christ. We've got to rededicate ourselves to serving and worshiping and giving God all the glory that he is due. So that was the first thing that, that came to me about choice. The second thing about making choices that came to me uh, you all are all familiar, you know, with the Marvel franchise and what do they love to say? With great power comes great responsibility. And that definitely applies to our Christian walk and life when we're making choices. So not only do we get to make choices about career and lifestyle and our Christian walk, but everything we do, we're supposed to be the light of God in this world. We're supposed to be his hands and his feet and his voice. We should be out making a difference in this world by the choices we make. So if we're in traffic and somebody cuts us off, we could take it or we could scream and holler like an idiot and be an example to the world. So it's, it's your choice in every single thing that we do. Do we choose? to be the light of God? Do we choose to bring peace? Do we choose to bring love? Or are we contributing 
to the confusion and anger and frustration of this world that we're living in. We have great responsibility with the choices that we make because God has given us the power to choose. And thirdly, last point, God gave you a choice. That means he gave others a choice. There have been so many wars and battles, so many bodies left dead in the in battlefields because we are trying to force our thoughts and our desires and our choices onto other people. If God gave you the choice whether or not to serve him, how dare we try and take that gift away from other people? It, it's from, from small things to the big things, from uh, how we decide people should dress when we judge people on how they dress or whether their hair is natural or straightened when we judge people on the type of language they use. Who are we to try and force the, the way we want to do things onto other people? I mean, especially, again, we're going to look at our churches and so much of what we strive to enforce on other people are traditions. They have absolutely nothing to do with the scriptures and serving God. But yet here we are battling folks and causing strife and destruction and causing some people to leave the church because we are trying to force our own personal preferences onto them. The same way God gave you a choice, he has given others a choice. So we can't force our thoughts, our personal preferences onto other people. What we can do is live a life that glorifies God. Live in such a way so that people want to do what we're doing. Because what we're doing is giving God the glory in every moment, in everything that we do. So just reading the, the scripture and thinking on this song gave me a lot to think about for me personally, because I know I make, you know, some questionable choices, multiple questionable choices every day. And what I want to do is that with every breath, every word that I speak, every expression on my face, every dollar that I spend, I want it all to be for the glory of God. I just want to shine and let his life just, just I want to live my whole life for him so that others can see him and know him. That together as a community of Christians, we will lift each other up. That we will choose to love each other and work together, respecting each other. Realizing that we all have a choice. We all have a choice. And our choice every day should be to give God the glory in everything that we do. Thank you. Let us pray. Dear God, we come before you now thanking you for today's message. We acknowledge God that you are sovereign over all things. We thank you, Lord, for the gift of free will and for the gift of your grace and mercy when we lose our way. Help us, Lord, to understand that your gift is for all and not just a few. We pray that we don't squander your gift of free will by blindly obeying the loudest voice in the room or whoever holds the title. God, we know that there is always a choice. We make decisions every minute of the day. Sometimes our choices are driven by flesh and ego. Lord, let us be like Joshua and stand firm in choosing you over all else. God, please calm our fears so that we don't try to control and limit the choices of others. Guide us, Lord, so that all our choices are done in love and reflect your love, grace, and mercy. Strengthen us, Lord to turn to you for your wisdom and not to lean on ourselves or man. Strengthen us, God, to use our voice to speak up for ourselves and for others. This gift of free will comes with the responsibility to accept the consequences of our choices, even those that we give away to leadership. Dear God, at the end of our journey, we pray that we have truly followed in Jesus's humble footsteps by showing our love for you in word and deed. 
Please be with us all. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. God, I come at this hour to say thank you, for while I was yet in my sins, you sent your son to die for me. You have said in your word, and I believe that if I confess with my mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in my heart that you raised him from the dead, I shall be saved. I confess 
and I do believe. Come into my heart, Lord Jesus. Amen. If you prayed that prayer and have accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, congratulations. Welcome to the family of Christ. You are in store for a beautiful journey. We strongly suggest that you reach out and find a local congregation where you can learn and grow with fellow believers in Christ. Again, welcome to the family. the one that stood at the gate, give me a light that I might go out into the darkness and the unknown. And the one said to me, go out into the darkness, go out into the unknown, but put your hand in the hand of God. And for you, that shall be better than light and much safer than a known way. Now to him who is able to keep you from falling and to make you stand without blemish in the presence of his glory with rejoicing. To the only God our Savior, through Jesus Christ our Lord, be glory, majesty, power, and authority before all time and now and forever. Thank you. 